Okay, so I'm going to talk about the hoo-ha about the post office, uh, but also on a broader scale, really, because to me, the post office uh, is an endemic problem we have in this country, uh, Great Britain. Yeah, it's a major, major problem. So, uh, you know, big thumbs up here to Mr. Bates, Alan Bates, uh, and his real story. Uh, but, you know, it, there's some major, major problems, which, funny enough, I don't think the media is really covering in enough detail or looking at. So we have to ask ourselves, first of all, the justice system. Justice should be blind. Yet how did all these convictions get through? How did they manage to push through all these convictions where innocent people are being convicted under our judicial system? That tells you that there's something majorly wrong in our justice system. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'll go into why I feel there's uh, a lot wrong with the justice system, okay? But you have to ask yourself, in each individual case here, yeah, the judges have found in favour, okay, of the post office, irrespective of the truth. And we, I think, as citizens, like to believe that the truth will out, okay? Uh, so, here we have uh, Paula Venels, okay, in a, a, a nice post office setting. And, you know, this is very typical, uh, these people who are at the top and the pinnacle of uh, uh, their organisations, they take all the credit, ignore all the discredit, and reap the rewards. When she was at the uh, select committee meeting, she was just, you know, she fished out the questions uh, prior as to how she was going to answer them. She didn't go into that meeting in good faith. She didn't go into that meeting, that select committee meeting, uh, to try and uncover the truth or to, to be uh, open disclosure. She went in there to falafel, to, to stand behind the stance of the post office. Clearly, she knew it was wrong. And if she didn't know, she was asleep at the wheel. Okay? Uh, that really is scandalous. Sure, she handed back her, her CBE, uh, but that was under duress. And, um, you know, questions are raised as to, you know, who nominated her for a CBE. But that is um, something which the British establishment does a lot. Now, I remember watching a um, video on excuse me, French for Legion. There was a chap there called Ray Pellin, actually, and he was a corporal de chef. Yeah? And he said, um, in the old days in the French for Legion, uh, you were asked for 28 days in the nick or a smack in the face. And he used to say, I, I always used to choose a smack in the face. I, if, if you've done something wrong, you had a choice of punishment, yeah? 28 days nick or a smack in the face. He said he chose a smack in the face. And when you looked at him, you could see he had quite a few smacks in the face. But the reality is this in regards to the post office, yeah? What the post office has done to those postmasters is a hundred times worse than them getting a smack in the face. I'm sure if all those post office uh, uh, masters and mistresses had said, look, you've done wrong, we think you've done wrong, uh, we're going to give you a smack in the face and then we're going to move on. I think they would have chosen a smack in the face, yeah? Instead of having to lose their entire livelihood, some of them, some of them committed suicide, others have been incarcerated, marriages thrown up to the wall. Actual real suffering from these people. Real suffering. And it seems as though within British society, that is acceptable, okay? when we, uh, these incidents happen. Now, it reminds me of a, another situation with Bassett Gold. These people uh, defrauded uh, hundreds of pensioners, hundreds of them, and the company got away with it. Now, I've done a, an investigation on that, and the, I'll give a link. Uh, but they got all, not only did they get away with it, what was shocking at the time was um, the uh, managing director, the last managing director of this company, Bassett Gold, they, uh, the, she was uh, uh, head of the prosecution 
or she was a lawyer for the prosecution for the Financial Conduct Authority. So she knew the regulator inside and out, and she was a gamekeeper turned poacher. And they rinsed uh, pensioners out of about £30 million. Pounds. And this, uh, a lot of these pensioners are still waiting uh, for, for their money. Yep. Now, similar thing happened with London Capital and Finance PLC. Uh, note this man here. Note this man here. Okay. His name is Andrew Bailey. Okay. Now, um, London Capital and Finance, uh, they, this company ripped off uh, 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 investors of about something like 150 million pounds. Uh, ridiculous sums. Uh, under the FCA watch, that is the regulators' watch, the Financial Conduct Authority. I want to talk, you know, talk about some of the similarities within the post office and this. Now, so the Financial Conduct Authority was the regulator which should have been looking at this, and uh, they didn't. They were asleep at the wheel, and you know, the, the, many of the people are still waiting for compensation for how they got ripped off. Now, this chap here, Andrew Bailey. He was in charge of the Financial Current uh, uh, Conduct Authority at the time. And there was not just Bassett Gold or the London Capital Finance. There were quite a few other scandals. But here's the rub. What happened to him? Did he get penalised? Did he get put in prison? No. He was promoted to become the governor of the Bank of England. The most... It's like the Pope. Yeah, you know, it's been head of the financial, uh, uh, you know, sector, if you like, uh, within Great Britain. The governor of the the Bank of England, he was promoted to after all that debacle. And in the meantime, uh, these uh, investors were trying to get justice as to what had happened to them under that chap's watch. Fortunately, for the uh, post office. Uh, masters and, and mistresses, you know, they got their day uh, and you know, m they managed to get justice for the wrong, some of the wrongdoings, i.e. they have been exonerated in regards to the accusations which have been levelled at, uh, at them. But we all know that they've paid a very, very heavy price. But why has it even come to the situation? Because this has been bubbling under the surface for years. Well, of course, it's general election time. So when there's a general election, you know, you know, political parties want to show that they're doing the right thing. They want to show that they're beefy, that they, you know, that they, you know, they are in control. So that when you go to that polling station, uh, you will uh, vote the way in which they want you to vote. As Ken Livingston, the first London mayor, said, if the uh, if the political process of voting changed anything, they wouldn't have it in the first place. But here is the root of the problem. The root of the problem are the companies, okay? Companies are like legal persons, okay? We have us on the right, natural persons and individuals, and on the left, artificial persons and corporations. And I think in the society which we live in, the system favours the company legal persons over the individual. The company reigns supreme over the individual. Now that takes me back, back into the old days of the old principalities, like you used to have in Italy, like you had in Germany, uh, in going very far back even in, in Great Britain. That is to say that certain areas of a landmass, say within Italy, have their own principalities and they have their own rules. And this is very much like how companies operate. They operate like principalities, laws unto themselves. Okay, what we have is the new principalities. Yeah, these are the new principalities which are not constrained by location, okay, even by jurisdiction. Each of these companies have their own rules which their staff must follow and obey. Uh, and they, you know, these the staff they sort of follow these rules as though they're the rules of the land. You know, we think we're in a democracy, but we're not because a lot of these companies and not run on democratic lines. They run on very much authoritarian lines, um, uh, totalitarian lines. Uh, but, you know, we live on a vast majority of our lives under these regimes, okay? So, you know, 
you know, these are brands and you know, it's the way the customer perceives the brand, but also the way in which uh, regulators see the brands uh, in terms of, and governments see the brands uh, in regards to the revenues which they generate and taxable re revenues, which it, uh, gets the eye and the ear of the governments. And in fact, they help shape policy and they have an ear to uh, the politicians far more than the every five years which we legal individuals can have. Uh, we are constrained with these little principalities, these modern principalities, usually through an employment contract, which in effect, we waive a lot of our rights to, to, uh, to, to join this. Uh, where am I going with this? Well, you know, we little people who are doing all the work having to live our lives under these principalities and these rules because the government don't really see us. They don't think about us. When we make minor transgressions, such as uh, on a double yellow line, for example, we parked on a double yellow line, we will get a parking ticket. So, so what's the relevance? The relevance is that these Andrew Baileys, these Paul of uh, 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 Venals, they haven't even been given a parking ticket. What the, you know, Andrew Bailey gets promoted to the head of the Bank of England. Uh, Paula uh, uh, Venables gets uh, given a CBE uh, and rewarded for her mismanagement. Uh, and only under the pain of death and immediate scrutiny does she hand it back. You know, I've handed back this award I've been given. Can you imagine that? Where you're in a job and you have to hand back your Employee of the Month award, but you've really mm, mm, you know, buggered up everything but the only punishment you're getting is handing back the employee of the month award but you're still in your job you're still getting your bonuses no problem yeah we work and work hard what is our deal our deal within our in this world what we have is we have a, an income which either we're struggling with debt or we're living paycheck to paycheck or you know uh, we, we haven't paid bills and trying to pay bills for free to get into that green zone is a very, very difficult hump. So in we come, Fujitsu. Fujitsu knew what was going on. When I say about the spack in the face, 28 days, Nick, Fujitsu knew full well what was going on. And look what's happened. Over a hundred million pound payout, 700 plus postmasters prosecuted, 93 convictions haven't been quashed, four deaths. Okay, but not a penny is being paid by Fujitsu. It's like they've got nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it at all. And this is rough. Why, why does this happen? I'll tell you why it happens. Because in Fujitsu and Horizon, there were workers there who knew little people, like the postmasters and the postmistresses, but they were on the other side. They were tied up in these contracts, in these principalities, and they couldn't say anything. If they said anything, they would lose their job and that little income, what they have. And so they zipped their mouths. And even though they were seeing what was going on in the media, even though they were aware of what was happening and they knew what the truth was, these little people kept stumped. Sometimes, you know, they saw what was going on, but they were conflicted as to what they should do. And this is because in this country, when you blow the whistle, yeah, when there's any whistle blowing to be done, you are on your own. You are not really covered, you're not really protected. There should be more protections for whistleblowers so that they should be rewarded. Whistleblowers should be rewarded, okay? They should be rewarded for blowing the whistle on these corporations for the stuff what they do. And they should be protected. They should be protected in regards to giving knowledge to regulators, whoever. And they should also be paid until the investigation has been completed. And it's only when that happens that scandals like this will be minimized because they would be on their toes because the accountability wouldn't be from the top, where some head of the, uh, you know, uh, you know or, the, or the CEO of the post office is going to some select committee. They'd have to keep their eyes and ears open for the little people and whether or not they will put the bubble in. 
So they have to be on board because it will be grassroots and grassroots up. So it's only when we have this that, you know, the little people have protection to whistleblow uh, will we get the protections what we require.